Hello, and welcome to episode 40 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley, and I am a yarn dyer and yarn store owner. My store is called Paper Crane Yarns, and we are located in Alabama. We're central in the state, so we are in a little town called Calera, and that is where I'm coming to today from. It is Sunday, August 25th, 2024, and it's a beautiful, it's been a beautiful morning outside. It's about nine o'clock right now, so, so far we've had nice, cool weather, but of course it's quickly heating up. Okay, so it has been about a month since I was last here, which is apparently my usual schedule. So I have a lot of projects to show you today, probably an unreasonable amount. So I'm very excited to share those things with you. But first, you can find all of my show notes down below in the description of this video. And you can find me on Instagram as Paper Crane Yarns, as well as Ravelry as Paper Crane Yarns. And my website is papercraneyarns.com. We have a fun event schedule coming up as, as the business is Paper Crane Yarns. So next month we have SAF, the Southeastern Animal Fiber Fair, and that is going to be in the Asheville, North Carolina area. It's, I think the town is called Fletcher or Fletching. Um, but regardless, I will link the website down below for you to check it out. And I hope that some of you can make it. It is the same weekend as Rhinebeck, unfortunately. So if you are traveling, I know you'll have to sort of pick and choose. But I hope you'll consider coming to SAF. I'm really excited. And as long as nothing changes with the, the vendor map, my booth is going to be right next to Fangirl Fibers. That's really exciting. Um, she, I've seen her booth in person. She does an excellent job. So I hope that, you know, I think, I think side by side, our booths are going to look really fun, very colorful. Um, so yeah, that's something exciting to look forward to. And then November 2nd is the first ever Alabama Fiber Festival. So that's another thing to look forward to. That is a one day event. It will take place um, at Briarfield, which is sort of a park here in Alabama, not too far from my shop. Um, so I'll link that website down below too. And then possibly September 14th, I think it is, I will be vending at a local event called Fiber Frenzy, which is hosted by the Greater Birmingham Fiber Guild. So I need to get in touch with them and confirm. So we have a busy event schedule coming up. I have been dyeing hundreds of skeins of yarn. I, I have a whole table over here next to me full of yarn. And tomorrow I'll be receiving... I think 400 or 500 more skeins of yarn that I have to dye. So I am busy, as you can imagine, um, lots of stuff going on with the shop. And if you have been wondering about the shop as far as in-stock updates go, um, right now I'm really preparing for the festivals. So I'm not necessarily updating my website with any of the yarn right now. But when I get back from all of these events, I will make sure to put everything that's left up on the website and uh, including project bags and whatever else comes home with me. But of course I carry lots of other brands. So anyway, that's enough of that. That was kind of long. I want to go ahead and, and get started with all of the projects that I've been making. I'm so happy to share those with you. So I've definitely moved away from my summer making. I, the last episode I posted, I, sh I shared a tank top that I had recently knit and since then, I have, I don't think I've touched a single other summer kind of project. It's been all accessory and sweater knitting for me, um, plus lots of cross stitch. Oh, I should mention that I will have knitting, crochet, cross stitch, spinning in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about my finished objects. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. So the first one I will start with is what I'm wearing. This is my prismatic sweater, which is a pattern by Woolen Pine Designs. And I'll make sure to insert some photos so you can kind of see how I've styled it and how it looks overall. But I'll stand up quickly and show you. So I think it is as cute as can be. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I kind of told the story a little bit last time and maybe the time before that, but this was 
a sort of dream cast on inspired by Stardew Valley. Sometime last year, I had picked up this skein of yarn from one of my favorite dyers who is Nerdy Knits. And she does Stardew Valley inspired yarn colorways. So this is the Prismatic Shard colorway. So I purchased this um, along with a little stitch marker of the, shard, of the Prismatic Shard from the game. And if you don't know, if you're not familiar with Stardew Valley, that's okay. I'm just kind of telling you the color inspiration behind this knit. Um, so I picked up this skein and then it sat in my stash for a while, but I kind of always thought I might knit this sweater using this yarn in the yoke because it seemed perfect. Um, so this in July, my husband and I got to go on probably one of the best nights of my life. We went to Atlanta to celebrate our anniversary early because there is a there is a Stardew Valley concert that's been touring and we actually caught the last show in the US, which I, I didn't even realize the one we were seeing was the last show. I digress. It was beautiful and whimsical and wonderful. And they did say they're bringing back the tour next year. So I can't wait for that. Um, but my whole goal was to cast on a Stardew Valley themed project to take along on the trip, just to have something to kind of remember the beautiful experience. So this is what I cast on. and. Um, I actually think I got the yoke done. I, I think I cast on maybe two or three days before we left for the trip. And then I had already finished the yoke, I think, by the time it was, by the time we were getting in the car. So I, I think I just knit on the body. I don't, I don't remember. It's been several weeks, but yes. So this is my Stardew Valley inspired sweater. And I think it came out better than I was picturing. Um, so with the yarns, the main color is my love letter colorway. This is paper crane yarns. And um, my contrast color, the main contrast color is again, Prismatic Shard from Nerdy Knits. And then you'll see there's a black outline. I just used from the shop um, a 50 gram skein of Quince & Co Finch, which is the fingering weight wool, and it's just a dark black. So I used maybe 25 grams or so of that. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of this skein left. So a good bit of it made it into the sweater, but I have an enough left that I will either make some shorty socks to match this pat this sweater or i will make something for my daughter i have to decide and then unfortunately i have one entire skein of my love letter colorway so for yardage for this sweater i used exactly two skeins of my main color of my love letter colorway and when i say exactly two skeins i mean when i got to the end of the second skein and i was binding off the sleeve, the second sleeve, I had maybe six inches left of the yarn. So I had preemptively caked this up thinking I would need it. And it turns out I didn't even touch it. So again, this might become a little project for my daughter. So we'll see what, I, what I'll do with that. But I could have sold this one. Oh, well. <laughs> I knit the size 37 inch bust, which should have given me about two and a half inches of positive ease. I definitely have a little bit more than that, I would say. I didn't I haven't taken measurements of it because for me, it's neither here nor there. I'm not going to go in and make any changes. Um, I like the way that the sleeves fit. I think that's really cute. The yoke is probably a little bit longer than I would have liked. There's, there's a good bit of fabric in here. Um, and the body, I'll untuck this. The body is quite long and oversized too. But I think when I wear this with jeans or leggings, that will be cute because then I can kind of cover up with it and then otherwise if I wear it with a skirt or something a little bit more tailored I can just tuck it in like this. So again I must have been off on gauge a little bit. This is a fingering weight sweater. Um, I think I actually used wooden needles to knit this, my Lika needles, because that's what I had available to me at the time. So that tends to loosen up my gauge. That's probably that's probably why it's a little bit bigger. But again I still love it. Um, the only modification was that I decided to do the hem ribbing. Um, I went down more needle sizes than I would have if I was on gauge just to help draw in the sweater a little bit. And I think that really helped because before it was kind of like an A-line tenting sort of shape on me. So I'm glad I did that. But otherwise, it's knit to pattern. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend knitting this. I thought it was so much fun. I love the little hearts that form. It's very, it's like 8-bit 
gamer art style. So I think it's really cute and just perfect for the inspiration. Okay, next finished object. We'll talk about this little guy since I also knit this one largely when I went on this trip. This is just a little cowl. Um, the pattern is called Lily of the Valley and the yarn is also called Lily of the Valley. So the pattern and the yarn both came from the Dyer Moonlit Yarns. I guess that she had done a poison plant collection, which say no more, I will be there. <laughs> but I came across the yarn company and the colorway because she put this project on Ravelry and it either came into hot right now or it was suggested for me um, and it was a free pattern and it looked really cute. So I, I pre-ordered a skein of the yarn and I knit it up when it, when it, as soon as it got here. So you can see there's a little bit of a texture pattern in here. This is sort of an assigned pooling yarn and pattern. So the skein was really pretty. It was this lovely meadow green color with um, undyed splotches basically. And so with the pattern, it's a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away here. But with the pattern, you just sort of cast on for your ribbing, do so many rows, and then once you start in this main portion, you knit every stitch, except for when you get to a little, one, one of the undyed sections on the yarn, then you just purl the white strands. So um, I found that even when I purled exactly where I came across the white, it didn't necessarily come out perfectly here because when I would come back around to it on the next row, depending on if I knit or purl, it kind of would draw the stitch up or so. So some of these white stitches look like knit stitches and some of the green look like purl stitches, but you know what? It does not matter. <laughs> I think it turned out really beautiful and I don't have any basic cowls like this until now. I only have like infinity cowls, doodle cowls. So this will be nice, something a little bit easy to throw on. Um, and it's going to match kind of a set that I'm making. I'll show you that mitten in a second. But yeah, so I used up almost the entire skein. This was a DK weight yarn. I probably had 10 grams left. So I, I think I got it just right. And oh, something I'll mention, because of course you can do this pattern with any kind of yarn. Um, I followed the instructions and I did it exactly to a T. I didn't change it at all, except maybe I went I didn't change it at all, but when I finished it and bound off, it was very wide and short. So it, when I tried it on, it was very loose around my neck and it was narrow. Um, but thankfully with blocking, I was able to make it uh, cinch it in a little bit. So now it's not quite as wide and it's longer. So to me, this is more how I was picturing the cowl would turn out. So yeah, just to note, if you knit this pattern, anytime that you knit, especially superwash yarns, when you get to the blocking process, you can sort of manipulate things, is all I'm trying to say. Despite my microphone, I will throw it on for a second and mute the audio so it's not all scratchy. I almost feel like I should have taken a before video of it so you could see how much I changed it when I blocked it. But yeah, that was, this is so cute. I have been finishing things left and right that I haven't been able to wear because it's, of course, summertime. So I'm really, really counting down the days until it's cool enough I can start wearing some of these super cute things that I've made and stashed away. Um, so this is one of them. So that's my Lily of the Valley cowl. Okay, now I'll show you a half-finished object. So this is still a work in progress, but I did fully finish one. And since it kind of goes with the cowl, I'll go ahead and show it to you. This is called the Better Together Mittens. And it is so cute. Um, obviously, it's just a basic mitten pattern, but the color I feel like is exactly what I was, what I had in mind. It's really, really cute. And again, it's going to go coincidentally. I didn't plan this, but it's going to go as a set with this cowl. So I'll have a nice matching accessory set. Um, and eventually, this will become my other mitten. Um, this is really cute. This is a paid for pattern. I think it was around four dollars US. It has a really cute twisted rib detail that kind of goes up with the hand and wraps around. And there's a, a little chart, very easy chart to follow to get that just right. Um, the only thing I would change about this is I actually don't like the way that you finish off the mittens. It is one of those things where you decrease sort of rapidly and then you just thread the leftover yarn onto a darning needle and you run it through all of the stitches and just draw it close, which is fine. But I don't like how it's kind of 
bunching up like that. I think I would have preferred to do a Kitchener stitch or something, but again, no big deal. It's not bothersome inside the mitten, so it's okay. Um, yeah, it's really cute. <laughs> so I'm excited to make the second one. This, these yarns are knitting for olive. I, I purchased these, I think at the end of last year because they were having a sale, maybe free shipping or a percentage off. Um, so I purchased this directly from Knitting for Olive and I got their merino. So it's the fingering weight merino and their silk mohair. And I think the colorway is, is either pea shoot or pea green. And it is a perfect pea shoot green. <laughs> I think it's adorable. Um, and I purchased it with the intention of making mittens. So there we go. It came to fruition halfway. So I've got one more mitten to make and then I'll have a cute little set of green accessories. So I do have another sweater to show you, but before I get there, actually let me drink some of my coffee. And oh, by the way, if you are wondering, this super cute mug, my mom and dad sent this to me last October. I was filming Vlogtober. I think a lot of you found my channel that way. Um, and just a little heads up, I will be doing it again this year. So I hope you're excited. I'm a little nervous, but it was a lot of fun last year. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I probably won't be able to put up a video every day because of staff, but last year I put up a video almost every day. So we'll see. Anyway, my parents sent me this mug when I was recording those videos and it was such a sweet surprise to find this on my doorstep. And so because it's almost September, which means it's basically October, which means it's basically fall. I am using this cup today. <laughs> okay, mittens. Sorry, I keep bouncing around. Um, I don't remember if I've shown these yet, but last year, Jamie Lomax, who is the designer behind the doodles, uh, she's Pacific Knit Co., she does all the doodle patterns. She, I've done a, a few test knits for her, and she had invited me to do a secret test knit um, so me and several other knitters, we got to quietly, secretly test knit for her book before her book was announced. And it was fun because when we got invited to the test knit, uh, we, I had an inkling that it was going to be a book. She never outright said, and I'm sure she wasn't allowed to say, but we were all kind of joking together that we had a feeling it was the book. And so when she announced the book a couple months ago, um, I was very excited because then I realized I could go ahead and share these. I have been silently wearing these all the time. Um, we were not really supposed to show these, but I am, this is one of my favorite knits I've ever made. So when we did the secret test knit, we were given access to probably a hundred charts. I don't know. It was quite a few charts and a lot of pattern recipes. So some people did socks, some did hats, there were fingerless mittens, and then um, full coverage mittens. So I did mittens and these are the charts that I picked out and the color palette that I did. So I have just been swooning over these since I knit them. I, I actually carry them around in my bag everywhere I go, even during the summertime because I just love them so much. So, um, on my right hand mitten, I have this thistle that I knit um, just a cute little filler chart. And then I've got the, uh, some moons here, of course. And the yarns for this, this main color is my Aura colorway, but this is on my BFL DK base. So it has a little bit of a gray base. Um, and then I used the black I dyed, this blue I dyed. That's my blue autumn colorway, I think. And then this is Wool Dreamer's De Hesa de Barrera in one of the green colors um, that I had left over from a different color work pattern I had knit. And then on my left mitten, I have this gorgeous moth, one of my favorite things I've ever made. And then I did another filler chart and the blue moon. So I kind of mimicked the design a little bit, um, but they are perfect. They're perfect fit. They're so cute. So I'm excited for her book to come out and for you guys to get to make these you, you could recreate this pattern um, the way that I designed it, or you could make your own. There's endless possibilities. Um, so yeah, those are my mittens that I had to keep secret for a long time. Hopefully I didn't already show those because that would be silly of me to think, you know, here I am granting you access to this gorgeous secret. But anyway, I love these. I feel like these are the epitome of 
me and everything I love. <laughs> okay, next finished object is going to require an outfit change. So let me pause the video. So this is sweater number two. It is the All Ho sweater by Anna Johanna. She's one of my favorite designers. And if you've been around for a while, <coughs> I got mohair in my throat. Okay, if you've been around for a while, this may be familiar to you because I actually um, knit this one a couple years ago. This was one of the first sweaters I ever knit. This was my first version and I absolutely love it so much. It's one of my most worn sweaters and for a while there it was starting to look a little rough because I kept wearing it and kept wearing it and I wasn't washing it and then pinning it out to block it and it was pilling and just, yeah, I wore this thing, it had lots of love. So sometime last year, I think, I actually bought this yarn to knit my second version and I just never got around to it until now. I picked up the yarn from my friend Laura who owns All Strung Out Yarn Shop in the Auburn, Alabama area. Um, so when I bought the yarn, I knew what I was going to knit. Um, I used this project bag, which I just think is so cute with the silvery gray sweater. Um, this was from my same order when I purchased this Lily of the Valley yarn. She also had these project bags that have poisonous plants. Um, it's so cute. This is so this is from Moonlit Yarns. And so I had kept this project in here. I have some of the yarn left over. Um, I actually have a full ball of this. So the two yarns are both from Rowan. My main yarn, if you will, was the Rowan Fine Lace, which is baby surrey alpaca and fine merino. So it's 80% alpaca, 20% wool. Um, and I, I think the colorway is 950. And I'm sorry if that's not accurate, but I'm pretty sure it's 950. It's just a cool gray. And then the mohair, this is where I kind of messed up. I threw away all of the yarn bands. So I'm sorry because I can't tell you what color this is, but it's sort of like a silvery lilac color. When I bought it, I thought it was just, I thought it was the same as this, but you can see this one's actually much warmer compared to this one. Um, but this is the Rowan Kid Silk Haze, I think is what they call it. Um, again, I got these from Laura at All Strung Out. So this is what I have left of the mohair and I have a full cake of this plus some. Um, and, okay, so, sorry, I'm kind of spinning my wheels here. So when I re-knit this one, and I, let me stand up and show you, goodness gracious. So as you can surely see, it has the most gorgeous lace yoke that runs all around the sweater. And then the right sleeve has that lace pattern as well. Um, and you could knit it on the left sleeve, but this is how she's designed it. And I actually think it's kind of nice because it helps me to know quickly which side is the front and which is the back. Um, although this sweater does have a high-low hem, so you could tell that way too. But... <sighs> I just think it's an absolutely gorgeous design. I have loved this since I first started knitting. So to knit a second one uh, feels really nice. Um, it's definitely got a different feeling from the first one. So this one was made with a Holst Garn yarn that is now discontinued, but it was like a cashmere and Geelong wool, I think it was. Um, so this one is honestly a lot softer. Um, this one, I have to admit, is pretty scratchy. I it looks dreamy and soft and lovely, and the alpaca wool yarn is super soft and dreamy. But this is my first time knitting with the Rowan mohair, and I, I'm i not one that's usually, I don't usually find mohair scratchy at all. Um, and this isn't like unwearable, but it is extremely scratchy. So that Rowan mohair, I, I, I guess it's not my favorite. It's very pretty and shiny and gorgeous. Um, the silk content, I guess, is nice. It, it looks beautiful, but it is scratchy. So just 
a note if you are sensitive you might not like the rowan mohair but i do think it turned out beautiful um what is interesting is i i actually knit the same size as i did the first time um but this is either a testament to how these yarns knit up or how my gauge has changed over the years or something because this one this silver one turned out bigger than this this other one um which is good that was the goal because this one i i always felt like especially after i had my daughter and my bust size changed a little bit i felt like this one was getting too short um and so i actually thought when i cast on my second one that i had gone up a size but when i finished it and went back to my ravelry notes for this first one i realized i knit the same size but it's interesting because if you lay them if you lay the, this one on top of the silver one, you can see the silver one's bigger. So it all worked out, but um, I'm happy it did because I, again, I wanted the size to be different. So, um, but I will say I have recently washed and reblocked this one and now it fits better for sure. But I don't know how much life it has left in it. It looks okay, I think on camera, but it's, it's starting to, it's starting to fall apart. So yeah. Um, again, this one is definitely longer. I have it tucked in since I'm I'm wearing it with the skirt, but it's actually, it's fairly long. Um, I haven't tried it on with pants yet, but I think it'll be, it'll be nice, a nice uh, length. And you can see it's high, low. But my favorite thing about this pattern is definitely this lace yoke. I think it's really pretty. This version is, very wintry, um, whereas the other one I, I would say is pretty autumnal. Um, so, yep. I feel like the fit turned out really nicely. I'm curious to see how this one will hold up since it's alpaca yarn. Alpaca tends to kind of grow over time, but because it's knit with the silk mohair, um, it might be a little bit more structured. So, we'll see. So, again, that's Alho, one of my favorites. I have one more little half finished object and then we'll move into all of my works in progress. There are quite a few. So I have this cute little sock. Um, I haven't woven in the ends or blocked it, but it is, I've got one sock done for my daughter. Um, the last episode that I recorded, I was sharing a pair of socks made out of some of the same yarns. And I think I was mentioning while I was recording that I would make some for my daughter. And after I recorded my daughter, I think I inserted some photos because my daughter found the socks that are my size and she was trying them on and she's two and it was really cute. So I went ahead and got started on hers. Um, so I need to make the second one, but I knit one of the patterns out of Summer Lee's The Sock Project book. She, this book is excellent because it has uh, toddler to large adult sizes. So every pattern has such a range of sizes, which is excellent. So I just did one of the color blocked ribbed sock patterns. And I think it's so cute. So this one is my hand dyed yarns. This is my Moon River colorway, which now exists in three different pairs of socks um, in my wardrobe. And then these are both from Knit Picks. These are the these are stroll yarns. So yep, um, it's fun to see how long her feet are getting. This looks you know a little unbalanced, but when you when this is blocked, it'll make more sense. Um, or when she puts it on because that rib stretches. But her foot is getting quite long. Um, but yeah, just a cute little basic sock. I want to make the second one. So I have some pretty grand work in progress, works in progress to show you, I think, in my humble opinion. I've got some really fun stuff and I have been putting a, a, like a little bit of work into a lot of different projects. So I kind of have a lot to show you today that I've been working on. Um, oh my goodness. I forgot I had another finished object. Okay, let's, let's look at that real quick. This is a cross stitch finished object that I just forgot to mention because it's been sitting behind me. Ta-da! Oh, here we go with the ring light. Okay, this is the Neon Cicada pattern by the designer Bad Stitched. This was one of her uh, Patreon exclusive patterns and that was actually why I joined her Patreon was just to get this gorgeous pattern. Um, I've noticed a lot of the cross stitch designers that I love who have Patreons, they tend to release the pattern exclusively, and then a year later, they publish it publicly. So I've had some people reach out 
and they're sad that they missed this. So just keep an eye on their Instagram page because I'm sure that they'll release this as a, an individual pattern eventually. Um, but it's called Neon Cicada and I stitched it on Opalescent Ada. So you can see like all these green specks and if you turn it the other way, they turn purple. Um, but that's all woven in, sorry, that's all woven into the Ada fabric. Um, but it's a beautiful hand dyed like navy. I'm really trying to avoid the ring light. It's a beautiful hand dyed navy. Um, and there's some variegation in there with the color. And then all of these flosses are DMC. So I used all of the called for. And it was so, such a beautiful stitch. You know what? Let me turn off the ring light for a second. Okay. That's better. It was such a beautiful stitch. There was a lot of sort of confetti where you're doing all these little color changes in there, but it was worth every bit. And I stitched this. I took a week off for a little staycation because I knew that this would be a very busy autumn season. So during that time, I stitched this in just a few days. Um, I could not put it down. So I'm very excited about this. And then I just framed it myself. And the back of the frame doesn't look that bad. This is the first time it hasn't looked a little rough, but I, I did put tape in just to keep it all secure and it's doing the job. So my plan was to hang this up in my home because I have kind of a bug art display in my home. And so I was going to add this there, but I've had it here at the shop until I could record and show you guys. And the longer it sits here, the more I feel like it fits in. So it might live here for a while and then maybe eventually go home and go up on my wall. Um, so yeah, that's my cross stitch finished object. It's so beautiful. This is, of course, an amazing cicada year. I've gone on and on about that, so I won't keep going on about it, but I was happy to commemorate this really special cicada year with this gorgeous project. I just finished recording and I completely forgot to show you guys my two skeins of hand spun. So I'll just quickly throw this in somewhere in the video. Um, I spun this one and unfortunately it looks a little, <laughs> I need to reskein it, but I spun this one during Tour de Fleece. So this was a beautiful braid of merino fiber that my friend Marquita gave me and it's from Nest Fiber. It was the Paper Kites colorway and I think it turned out really beautifully. I'm very proud of the way that I spun this one. Um, I, I Again, I just think it's so gorgeous. I'm very proud of this one. I do want to reskein it because after I wet blocked it and it kind of, I think, shrank in a little bit, some of these little curly guys started sticking out of the skein. Um, so I need to reskein this one. But that's about 100 grams or so of yarn, and I think this will be a beautiful contrast color in some kind of pressed flowers hat or shawl um, or something like that. And then this one I just spun. So this is a gorgeous braid of fiber that I picked up from. Um, Maddie of Sherwood Fiber Arts. I think it was Fiber Frenzy of last September, so it's been patiently waiting in my stash for me to spin. This is a gorgeous braid of Romney Fiber, which it turns out is my new favorite fiber to spin. This was a dream. It's like a nice kind of toothy, rustic feel, but it's still soft. Um, I think I spun it just right, so this one really worked for my hands and my spinning style, and so I ended up with this gorgeous two-ply yarn. It's about a worsted weight. Um, it's 104 grams. Um, probably around 170 yards or so. So it's it's a little thick and thin, so I would say overall, overall it's probably worsted. But it's a beautiful colorway, and I was planning on spinning this to make the Noctuidae uh, pullover, which is a beautiful pattern full of moths. So I'll have to gauge swatch and see if this will work since I spun it a little bit thicker, but I think it could work. Um, well, maybe not. But anyway, that's a gorgeous skein of hand spun, so I just wanted to make sure that I also shared those. Okay, so now we can talk about works in progress. And I will start with knitting and then move to crochet and then move to cross stitch. The first one I'll show you is probably the one that I've been working on the longest. This is definitely a bit of a long-term project, although I have been making a lot of progress so it's in one of my Fat Squirrel Fibers bags. I love this one. I've shown this one a dozen times. <laughs> this is my Heirloom Quilt Cardi by Katrin Seaburger. And I have a ton of squares that I have finished. This cord is going off. Okay. 
Um, I have a ton of squares that I finished. Most of them are blocked with their ends woven in, but there are a few I've made since that are not. Um, let me try to pull all these out. I have a great big stack of them. So I am knitting mine with six different colors. And I have shown the color palette a couple of times, but it's greens and um, beige, reddish kind of colors. I will not hold up the yarns. I have done so in previous videos. I'm not going to hold them up because for this entire project, you're holding your yarns double. So I have a lot of little cakes of yarn in here. All right, I've got all of my squares sorted. So I am actually right at or just over the halfway point. Oh, my phone is ringing. Nope. Okay, goodness gracious. So I'm I'm just at the halfway point with all the squares that I'm knitting. I think I have maybe one more than is the halfway point. But anyway, I have enough squares to go ahead and do the whole back panel. So now I can kind of lay them out and start to format how I'm going to arrange the colors. And then I'm working on the two front panel squares right now. Um, so I have this little stack of forced green squares. I'm going to just very quickly show you each square, but I will insert a photo of when they were blocking and that'll kind of give you an idea of all of them together. Got this one, this one. And I am knitting the smallest size of this pattern. There are only three sizes, but they are um, designed with quite a bit of ease. And because it's all of these little squares that you're sewing together, you can definitely modify your finished object, your garment to, did I already show these? No. <laughs> you can definitely modify your garment to a size that is suitable for you. So I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with how well all of the colors are playing together. I knew that they would work well, but I, I was thinking a few of them might be kind of lower contrast, but even the ones that I thought would be low contrast are still knitting up nicely, um, like that one. And then I think, I think there's one in here. This brown and red even is coming out really well. So that is good news. Okay, I think that's all of them. Yeah. So <laughs> not a whole lot to look at yet. But um, as you can see, I have been busily working away on all these squares. I think the last time I was working on this project, I only had maybe a handful of squares done. So I have gotten quite a few done. I am determined to finish this garment for the autumn, for the fall, so that I can wear it this year. And um especially in the season where these colors kind of really go. Um, and it's going to look cute with my little green accessories, I think. So that is my progress on my heirloom quilt cardi. There's a lot of them when you look at them all together. <laughs> I, was, I was really working on these nonstop. I, I wake up every day at around 4 o'clock in the morning. I have to do a little bit of work, and then I have, I have between... When I finish that work and when my daughter wakes up to myself. So that's when I get my knitting done. And I have found that most mornings I can get about two of these done before she wakes up. So it takes me now about maybe 40 minutes or 45 minutes to knit each of these little blocks. Um, so if I keep doing that whole to a morning thing, I could get this done in a little over a week. Just this part. Of course, then I have to sew them all together and I have to do the sleeves, but as far as the squares go, I could get them done in about a week. So when I finish another project, I will work on that. Speaking of which, we'll stay on the little quilt train here. Um, in this gorgeous bag, which is by Rose and the Wren, it's got cute little quilt motifs. I love these subtle, there's a knitting basket, um, strawberries, tea, it's just precious. So in here, I have another quilt-themed garment. 
I am knitting the Polly Cardigan, which is a new pattern by Savory Knitting or Amy Christoffers. And I have been just working away at this one. This has been my number one project um, ever since I cast on. So <laughs> I have, unfortunately, the way that my needles are, I can't open this flat. So I'm sorry about that. But I have the entire body chart done. So you can see the quilt stars in here. There's three repeats of that chart. So there's one on both front panels and then there's one going down the back panel. So I do have the three little stars here. And I'm at the point now where I have to attach the sleeves. So I've cast on my first sleeve. Um, in the pattern, she has you knit the sleeves first so that when you're knitting the back and, or the body and you get to this part, you can just attach them. But I really wanted to knit on the body, so I just waited to do the sleeves. These are from Cuff Up, and um, they're so cute. So I actually could have already had probably both sleeves done, but I had to rip out my entire first sleeve and start over. I had misread the instructions for the increases, so I had basically done fewer rows in between each increase. Uh, section and so I had like this rapid increasing right here and then I had already done all of my increases so it was like you had this really narrow cuff and then all of a sudden this big bag of fabric and it I kept thinking this cannot be right but my stitch gauge is perfect so I, I thought I just need to trust the pattern but the more and more that I, I would slip it on and try it on and it was looking gigantic Gigantic right here and I would refer to the pattern photos. I knew something must be wrong So I reread the whole pattern and it took me a couple of reads to realize what I had done wrong um, I kind of wish that section of the pattern was written a little bit more simply It's kind of wordy with the way that it tells you where to repeat and I think if it was simplified And it's a gorgeous pattern. This is not a complaint about the pattern But for me, I think that the wording if it was simplified I would have it would have gone better for me personally, but it's a very quick knit since it's worsted weight yarn and it's a really fun knit. So I don't mind redoing the sleeve. And now I'm just about to be done with the chart again, and then I'll just knit till the correct length. Um, and then I'll have a sleeve and then I can do it all again. But this will be a finished object for sure. By the next time I record, I think, I think I could realistically get this done in the next week. So that's probably what's going to happen unless something else steals my heart. <laughs> The yarns for this are, uh, my contrast is Spin Cycle Dream State, which is the worsted weight version of their yarn. And this colorway is called Pale September, which is from La Mercerie in the Washington, in Washington State. Um, it's their exclusive colorway and it's really pretty. Honestly, I have never really wanted to buy Spin Cycle only because I am a spinner. And so <laughs> I could have realistically spun the yarn for this project, but I really wanted to get this cast on and I don't feel like I have a lot of a lot of spinning time right now and I needed 150 grams of this. So anyway, I went ahead and purchased this. I wish that my skeins were a little bit more pink. This one has a little bit more color change than the other one I'm working with right now, but you can see there's light pinks, there's sort of mustard yellows, beige, um, in this star, I got some of the hot pink that I was hoping for, but it was only a few rows worth. And the rest of the skeins that I have are a little bit more subtle like this. So overall, I don't have quite as much color change if you look at it from a distance um, as, say, the pattern examples, but I still very much love it. I think it's going to be really pretty. The main color is Rarum Natura in the Gilead base and the colorway is called caramel so those are my two colors for the poly cardigan i could see myself making a third one of these a, a second one of these with hand spun and hand dyed worsted weight yarn um, originally i was hoping to dye the worsted weight yarn for this myself but my undyed yarn shipment it took a big detour before i started this project and so i just went ahead and did this I have to say, I'm really glad that I got these because they're both non-superwash and soft as can be. This, 
I've never used Gerberum Natura before. This is so soft and squishy and lovely. I, I love this so much. And knitting the mosaic colorwork knitting pattern has been a breeze with it because it, if, you know, if it comes off the needles or something, each of the stitches stays as is. So they're easy just to swoop back up. Um, it's been lovely to work with. It's really springy in my hand uh, and I just love it. So I'm very excited about this project and I have to say this bag could not have matched any better. <laughs> I should mention I'm knitting the size two of this pattern and I do have per perfect stitch gauge. Um, I haven't checked my row gauge since, you know, you can, after the chart, you can keep knitting until the correct measurement. So to me, the row gauge wasn't necessarily as important, although that might change when I get to the shaping up here, but we'll see. Um, but as far as stitch gauge goes, it's spot on. So hopefully the fit is just right. We will see. Um, and, oh, I should show you this. I have this cute little quilt block that I sewed. And again, it just matches that project so perfectly. It's very, I, I guess the week that I started that project and I ordered the yarn for it and I sewed this, I was feeling clearly a particular color palette and design. Um, I, so I sewed this, I think before I ordered the yarn for that. So I, I guess this inspired that. But this is my first ever sawtooth star quilt block that i've sewn and i love it so much i want to make a whole quilt out of um these fabrics but also just this just the sawtooth star quilt block i know that this has been an extremely trendy thing recently but for good reason and it's not like it's new it's been around for way longer than just 2024 um i love to see that everybody's feeling inspired by this right now because it's really cute and i love that it has ample opportunity to play with mixing different colors. I mean, there's so many ways you could construct something like this. Um, so I, I had a lot of fun sewing this up. It was, it was, it was just great. I, I definitely looking at it now, I see where I can improve upon it later when you're working up close, you know, you might not necessarily notice something that you could have done differently. Like my seam allowance here where I sewed this flying geese block to this main block. I realized that it should have been a little different so that it would, so these two points would meet. So there's a couple of these stars where this gap is kind of wide. And then there's some where I got a little bit closer. So I kind of realized what I need to do going forward. But yeah, so there's that. I haven't decided what to do with this yet. It's just unfinished. I'm either going to make a mini quilt for a wall hanging since it's my first one, or I will turn it into a project bag for myself. Um, I was thinking a little pillow for the couch, but the block is kind of small, so I don't think I'll do that. Um, so stay tuned. I will figure out something to do with that. So I guess it's kind of a finished object, but it goes with all of my quilt projects. I do have one more quilt themed project to show you, but I'll save that for after the knitting because it's crochet. So my next knitting work in progress is in this bag, one of my favorites. I sewed this one I feel like a couple years ago now. I think it's perfect for the coming season and the project that's in it is one of my most favorite. If this was a little bit easier to knit, I would be knitting on this one day and night just to get it done because I cannot wait for the finished object. So in this bag, I have my wings, which is a currently unreleased pattern by Claudia Quintanilla, who is one of my absolute favorite designers but she is coming out with her second book. I think it's her second book and it's called Memory Lane and it is full of the most gorgeous patterns that are um, elevated in some way with a special technique. So beading, embroidery, crochet, just different elements that kind of take it from basic beautiful knitting pattern to something truly special. So not too long ago, I actually picked up her first book which is called Making Memories and this one is Children's Patterns. I have it out right now because I'm about to cast something on out of here. Um, so I love this book so much. And shortly after I got this, her team reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in perhaps preview knitting some of the patterns. So I got to pick out a couple of the patterns and they sent them to me digitally for me to knit and um, not like a test knit. They are already ready to go but the idea being that I could help to kind of share the word about her upcoming book 
So people who are interested in maybe pre-ordering it or who want to get it when it comes out can do so. And I have never said yes to anything so fast in my life because I treasure all of her designs and um, the, the stories that she's sort of written behind each design are so special and precious. And it's very much worth checking out if you're interested um, in kind of learning a little bit about her life and her design process. Um, Wings has a beautiful, I'm not going to even share what Wings is inspired by because it will make me emotional. But if you go to her Instagram page and go to the post for Wings, you can kind of read about the inspiration behind this pattern. And again, I, I'm not going to talk about it because I will cry. So this is my version. And I have been so, so in love with this project. Um, but what is stopping me from working on it more regularly is the beading rows are, they take me quite a while because of the way in which I'm having to bead. And I cannot really do it with my daughter around. So that that leaves very few pockets of time where I have good light and my daughter is busy or asleep that I can work on this. But I have made some decent progress. Uh, so hopefully I already included a picture of what this will look like. But if not, it is an all over lace work beaded blouse made out of a strand of fluffy so, uh, lace weight yarn. So I'm using Sadness Garn Tin Silk Mohair, which I carry here in my shop. And this is the, I think it's called Dark Old Pink colorway. And I have the most gorgeous multicolored beads in here. So hopefully these will come out well on the camera. Some of the beads are really dark, almost black, like a dark green. And some of them are a very light sort of rose quartz color. So I'm just using them as they sort of randomly come out on these strands of beads that I have. So I'm just pulling each bead off. Hello. There we go. I'm just pulling each bead off as they come. There are some truly gorgeous beads in here. These are from Tejas Beads. And I don't remember what they're called. Maybe it's the tourmaline, but they are so pretty. And, um, oh, it's called watermelon tourmaline. And so those are the beads that I'm using. They are itty bitty. And so the hole, the little hole for each bead is so small that I can't even use a, a size 14 crochet hook, which is I think a half of a millimeter. Um, unfortunately, there are no crochet hooks that are small enough to help me bead this. So what I'm having to use, uh, thankfully, my friends who come to my shop told me about this. These are for people who like have braces and retainers mostly, but it's a type of dental floss. And you can only use them so many times before they start to <laughs> look like this and become a little bit unusable. But basically, I'm having to pop each of those little beads onto this knit the stitch, essentially lace this on there with this. And so, yeah, it's taking me longer than I would like, but that's okay. It is going to be a treasured blouse forever. So, and I have from Common Craft Co., which I now carry in my shop, I have these cute little no face stitch, stop, stitch stoppers. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place. I haven't done this in a while. There's my colorway, my tin silk mohair. Um, and again, with just like with my poly cardigan, my intention was to use my hand dyed silk, silk mohair yarn, but the yarns were not getting here in time and I, I needed to get started on this. So I just went ahead and used this colorway. But my other thought was that I was going to use my, either my Mariner's Tail colorway or my Forager, my Forage colorway, which are both kind of deep sea green. And I was still going to use the same beads. Um, so this would have been gorgeous in that sea green color too. But I, I think rosy colors look really nice on me and I have other projects that I can wear with this. So this is good for my wardrobe for sure. But yeah, this is such a special project. I'm excited to see all the lace open up, to see all the beads really shine once everything opens up and I put it on. And um, something special about this project is there is this gorgeous collar that's going to be knit down onto this neckline. So it's not just going to be this circular neck. There's going to be this beautiful 
really decorative collar that kind of gives it the wings. And I'm just so excited about wearing this one. <laughs> I have a ways to go, but I, I know that once I can just get into a rhythm on this, because the lace chart is very simple. It is, if this was just lace, I would have already finished this by now, but I want to make sure that I get each and every bead on there. So it's taking me a while, but again, well worth every single moment of it. And I basically want to knit every single pattern out of that book. I already picked out my second pattern um, that I will be knitting once I finish this one. Uh, so that is my extra special project that's on the needles currently. Okay, next work in progress. This is a gift knit for my husband. I just moved it into this bag. This is a mother goose project bag that this is one of the first project bags I ever sewed up with some fabric that I just had, but it's based on the mother goose story. Um, I don't even remember who makes this fabric, but I think it's really cute. And there's flour on it from when I was making sourdough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so in this bag, I have my husband's annual sweater. I make him a sweater every year. And this year, this is my anniversary present to him. One of my anniversary presents. We just celebrated five years together. So I'm making him something quite special, I think. First. I did a gauge swatch. Some of you will be proud of me, I think. And I'm glad that I did because uh, when I cast on with, or when I started the gauge swatch with the recommended needle size, my stitch, my gauge was too big. So I ended up going down a needle size and I got perfect gauge. So I'm really glad that I gauge swatched because he is a very tall man with very long arms and he's got like a thin waist, but a wider chest. So he he needs really tailored garments. So when I knit him something, I have to be very careful to get it just right, um, which is why I gauge swatched. I am using stone wool, which is 100% non-superwash Coriadale. This is a yarn that I carry here in my shop. Um, this colorway is gorgeous. It's called Sorel Number no. Two, and it's a reddish brown, just gorgeous with flecks of like dark, almost black. And I love this. Um, okay, so the sweater is the Old Fashioned by Maxim Sear. It's one of his newer patterns. He came out with it this year, and it is so gorgeous. This yarn is really thick, so it knits up quickly. I've made some good progress. Um, I need to attach a new cake of yarn. That's why I haven't kept working on this. I need to cake some up. I think so far this is two skeins of that yarn, so I, I will end up using a good bit of this yarn, but that's okay. Um, so it has this beautiful detail that goes down the raglan, and it will go down the sleeves too, I think, maybe. I don't remember, actually. But this is on the front and back, and it is just such a gorgeous detail. And then this is like a moss stitch design, so lots of texture in this pattern. Um, it's only a four row repeat and basically it's just remembering which row you start with the pearl and which you start with the knit. So I am having to use Knit Companion with this just to keep track of which one I'm on so that I don't get off in the pattern. Of course, that you can just read your knitting, but it's a little bit easier to just move back and forth on Knit Companion and remind myself where I am. Um, there is a folded over collar, so it's nice and thick. And it's open right now because at the end, of course, I'll have to pick up and do the sort of the collar. The It's not a button placket. There's no buttons. But, you know, the collar that goes down the front of the sweater. Um, but it's nice and sturdy. And my idea for this is it'll be kind of like a winter coat. It's really nice and um, thick. It's going to be extremely warm. So I hope that he'll get a lot of use out of this. Um, I like it a lot. It's not going to fit me, but it's it's really nice. This is a very high quality knit, I think. Um, I'm, I, I always love Maxim Sears designs. I've knit, I think this is my third or fourth time knitting one of his designs. And they're really well done. Um, so I'll probably always knit his patterns for my husband. Okay, yeah, the, the stitch goes down the, the side. For I didn't see it for a minute there, but it, it does. This little detail. Very lovely. And I have stitch stoppers that I got from Lindsay of Simply Serving, I think last year. Oh, and a little Nuka-Cola bottle cap because I've been 
binge playing Fallout 3 again. Oh, Lindsay made that. So that's my old-fashioned cardigan that I'm making for my husband. The next work in progress that I have to show is my Rebel Shawl, which is a pattern by Leslie Ann Robinson of Knit Graffiti. And I'm using this patchwork project bag that I made myself. It's quilted and I really love it. Um, it's made out of a lot of scrap fabrics that I had. I've shown this a dozen times as well, but it's one of my favorites. So I have made progress on this one, which is very exciting because this is one of my favorite knitting projects. It's one of the most fun that I have on the needles, but right now it feels like it's lower priority. So I'm not knitting it as much, but I did get through section one and I'm now knitting in section two. So that's nice to kind of make a little bit of progress. So it's an all over two color brio shawl and I love it. So this is the right side. And this is the back um, and it is, it is reversible, but I don't like the way that these two colors look together on the back. So I will definitely keep this as the front. The two colorways that I'm using are uh, my main color is pink pineapple, which is from Cat Sandwich Fibers. And my contrast is Moon River uh, from Paper Crane Yarns. This is my Moon River colorway on my Merino Cashmere Nylon base. And I love these two together. And again, I think the way that they are coming out on the right side looks incredible. I think this is just so cute. I love all the speckles. There we go. I'm very excited about this. I need to put it on wider needles. Um, yeah, making some good progress. This will be a shawl eventually for me to wear. I have been so in love with brioche knitting ever since I made my brioche cardigan last fall. I made the Agnet or Agneta cardigan. And ever since then, again, I've just loved brioche. Um, it's so easy compared to what I expected it would be. Yeah, it's so much fun. So easy. I love this one a lot. I'm excited to really be able to stand back and look at all of the gorgeous increases because the pattern, that's definitely one of the big features in the pattern. So anyway, this is my cute, fun, bright project at the moment when everything else kind of feels more autumnal and dark than I usually knit. I usually kind of knit some fun colors, I think. I think I have one more knitting whip that I just cast on last night. I have this in my Bluey project bag. I never showed this, but Forbidden Fiber Co. a couple of months ago, I think, did a little Bluey collection and I got the cross stitch kit. So I'm doing a, I'm not going to show it today because there's not a lot of work done on it, but I'm doing a little Bluey cross stitch to hang up in my daughter's room because we love, we love Bluey. We sure do. <laughs> so in here I have a little baby knit. I, I've mentioned this before, but I have a second job. So I don't just own the yarn company and all of the craziness that goes with that. I also work remotely for a company that provides disability services. And so the lady who owns the company is having a baby and he's almost here. So I'm knitting him a little sweater. I just cast on last night, so there's not a lot to show, but I have decided to make the storm sweater, which is a petite knit pattern. It's really cute. And I know another person, Brooke, if you're watching, who I told I was making them a sweater or I was making them a project and then I didn't like how it was going. So I stopped and now her baby will be a year old before we know it. So I'm going to also probably make the same pattern for her. Um, but I've gone ahead and started on the other baby's version since he'll be born in just a few weeks. I love the way that this texture is coming out so far. I'm using, I carry this in my shop. This is Sadness Garn Sunday. And the color, it's so interesting because depending on the light, it looks green or blue or gray. I think it's really a green, like a celadon kind of color. But when it's dark, it looks charcoal gray. So yeah, but it, it's green. <laughs> so I'm working on the back part right now. I'm just going through the chart for the back part of the yoke. And then eventually, once I get done with this chart, I'll pick up the stitches here and work the front and then they'll join in the round. Um, so I am enjoying knitting this so far. I think it's really cute. And this is my first time knitting for a baby boy. So yeah, that's exciting. So I will have that one done here shortly. I want to go ahead and just 
get it in the mail for her so that she can have it. And um, I am making the three to six month size because her baby, is, I guess, is coming late September, early October. And I'm thinking by the time it's cold where she lives, the three to six month size would be better. The smaller option was zero to three month size, which I could have done, but every baby is born so different. Some are born itty bitty. Some are born, my daughter was like very average. Um, so she's like, this whole time she's been her size according to the measurements um, and her age. But you know, some babies are a little bit bigger. And so anyway, I thought three to six months size, size. So if he ends up being bigger, he can wear it still. But if he was if he's too big for the zero to three month size before it's cold, then he could never wear it. So yeah, you see where I'm going with this. It's so interesting knitting for A, people who aren't even here yet, <laughs> people who have not been born yet, and B, um, people who grow so rapidly. It's crazy, fun. I like doing baby knits. All right, <laughs> now that I'm surrounded in a chaotic mess of knitting projects that are just all over the floor, um, I'll show you my crochet work in progress. So this is in my other fat squirrel fibers bag. I only have two from her. I wish I had all of her bags, but I love this one. This is my favorite and it's absolutely huge, which is perfect for the blanket project within. This is a pattern called Quiet Sky by Anita Gibney. And first of all, there's lots of ends sticking out. I'm sorry. It is what it is. I don't find much time to crochet. Crochet does not come as naturally to me as knitting. And so, um, but I would love to get this project done. I have a lot of work ahead of me, so it won't be anytime soon. But I did put a little bit of work into it since the last time I showed it. So there's that. <laughs> so I have three blocks pretty much done. This one is done done. It's just not blocked. Um, I did the single crochet border. So the last time I showed this, I had done everything except for that single crochet border. So now I've done that. So now it's done. Um, it's really cute. It's comprised of all granny squares. So there's there's plain granny squares, of course, that sort of fill out, you know, the corners. And then these ones you are crocheting kind of modularly where you're working with the two and you're going back and forth to um, change colors and build up the little triangles. So you're making the flying geese. Each of these are separate, but you are joining as you go. Um, and then the center motif, this is all one crochet block. And so the when then you're attaching all of these little granny squares to that center block. And then this is, okay, so, sorry, I had text messages. Um, so yeah, I've made two of these now. I just need to do the single crochet border on this one. But I have two of these guys. And then I have one green one with the blue center. Um, I've talked about this before, but it has been several years since I crocheted. So picking crochet back up, I'm having to kind of relearn some of the Tricks to keeping things nice and neat. I would say my crochet is not very neat. Um, like for example, the center of my magic ring. Uh, when I was first, when I first started back, they were really wide, and I have kind of remembered how to do it. So now they're nice and neat again. Um, yeah, I have three big blocks done, and I'm making an entire. I'm making the pattern to size. So I have lots and lots of blocks to go, but. Crochet does move pretty quickly. I just have to follow the pattern along to a T as I'm going since, um, you know, it's like when I, when I am consistently working on this, I can remember the pattern and just go without referring to the pattern. But then I take long breaks in between each square and I have to refer to the pattern. And then by the time I get into the routine, I've moved on to a different project. So, but I would like to work on that some more. It's six different colors. And these are all Barocco vintage DK. So they are a wool acrylic blend, which I thought would be nice for a blanket. So I have this beautiful, uh oh, everything's a big mess. I have this beautiful like robin's egg kind of color. I have this fennel green color. I have this robin's egg color, this fennel green color. This one I think is called mushroom, but it's basically just, <laughs> it's basically just beige. And then I have this one, which is called Marsala. And the pink one, I think, is called Raspberry. And then I have um, just this white. And I'm using this gorgeous Furls crochet hook. 
So this is a very special project all around. I'm pulling it out now. I'm like, I need to get back to this. <laughs> okay, so now I will move on to cross stitch. I'm going to try to move quickly through this. I probably will not spend a lot of time talking about each thing. So the first pattern up is coffee and eggs. This is by the Artsy Housewife. I think I've made a good bit of progress since the last time I showed it. I stitched the whole chicken um, little coffee cup and I've started on the woman who's holding the egg, eggs. And it's really pretty. Again, I don't remember if I'm stitching this on Lugana. It's not Ada, but I don't think it's Lina. It's like Lina, linen. It's even weave or Lugana. I think it's Lugana. It's really nice and soft. Um, I love the color, very nice and neutral. And there's going to be lots of colors coming on this side. There's a little rainbow and just all kinds of stuff. So this has been a very enjoyable project. I was working on this one a lot until I started my neon cicada. So I would like to return to this. I am keeping it in this cute little project bag. And I have a floss drop in there. I carry these in my shop now. So that's Coffee and Eggs by the Artsy Housewife. It's, I think last time I said it was all DMC and it's not, it is fancy floss. They're all over dyed flosses. Um, they're very pretty. There might be one or two DMC in there, but it's a gorgeous project. Okay, next I have my Arctic Animals Stitch Along. This is the current mystery stitch along from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I have done a really good job at keeping up with this. So, so far, I have done every clue, and there's been four, so we're on clue five. I've done every clue before the next clue has come out, which has felt really good. But right now, I've just started on the puffins, and it's been out for a few weeks now. So I, I, if I'm going to keep up, and I want to, but of course, I've got a lot going on professionally. If I'm going to keep up, I really need to sit down and stitch this. But I did start on the puffin, um, so that's excellent. This is a kit that I picked up from them, so I'm using the called for fabric. This one I'm stitching on Ada, and I've got their cute little needle minder. So the first section was this right here with the Arctic foxes and the voles. And then we did the cute walrus, and some of it is cut off here in my nerge hoop. And then we did the caribou, so that was the last thing I did. And now we're doing the puffins. So this one is so much fun. I'm excited that at the end of this, I'll have a finished object that I can frame and put up on my wall. My husband and I, we draw and paint each other narwhals. So I will get to add this to our narwhal collection because I do know there will be a narwhal. They did a sneak peek of that. Um, so I'm excited to get that done. That's that one. And then I have made a little progress on my, this is called The Last Unicorn by Sprouting Lupin. It's so <laughs> pretty. If I'm honest, this is the project that I most want to work on because this is the finished object that I want the most. I think it's so gorgeous. I love, I love the stitch. All of the different flowers that will be in here. The unicorn is beautiful. There's going to be this great big tree. It is a very precious project, but there are thousands of, of stitches in this one. And I am stitching it on linen. Um, you may remember I started this project over because the first piece of linen that I had was a navy blue and it was my first time stitching on linen and it was not looking very neat so I just went ahead and got this more green fabric and I started over and I'm much happier with it but I will say I do wish I do wish my thread count was smaller this is a 28 count and um, up close you can really see kind of all the gaps between the stitches from far away it looks okay and it, I mean it looks fine but I wish that it was a little bit more seamless. So I should have done more of like a 32 count fabric, I think. But that's okay. I'm not starting over again. <laughs> so, so beautiful. I, I really love this one. I cannot wait to have this framed and up on my wall somewhere. So I do have other cross stitch whips, but I'm not going to show them yet. Um, this is my only new start that I'm going to share. And it's in a new bag. So this is kind of also my little haul. I, I have been much more responsible with buying craft supplies recently. So I don't really have anything to show you. But I do have this 
adorable bag. I could not pass this up. And I have a new project within. So this is something I was so excited to start. Um, so I have, here's my floss drop and my color palette. These floss drops, by the way, are from Sunrise Grove. And again, I now carry them in my shop, so you can get them on my website. This one is like the Kraken with the fill, uh, a ship. <laughs> so that's my color palette. And I barely have gotten started at all. This is laughable, but I just wanted to show because I love all the colors. This is called, I think this is called Strawberry Mountain by Jed X Stitch. I think that's right. I'll have it on screen and link below. Um, so all I have are these few little stitches, but I'll have put up a picture of what this will look like. And it is going to be so stunning. And I love, I love the color palette. I love the color of the fabric. The design is a beautiful design and I have lots of this fabric. So I'll get to use this um, for something else as well. I think this one might be, so this is from Fiber on a Whim, and this one is the 32 count Belfast linen, and the color is brick, so it's a hand dyed linen, and I do like this count much better. I really wish my unicorn was on this, this count, but that's okay. So yeah, there's my humble little start at the top. So that is all the cross stitch I'm going to share, and I really only have one other purchase I guess I can show you. I took the label off because I thought I was going to go ahead and skein, uh, wind this up and then I talked myself out of it because I have too many projects. But this is a skein of self-striping yarn from Desert Vista Dye Works. And I think the colorway is like Happy Birthday Cupcake. I think that's right. I just wanted the pinks and browns and the subtle speckle rainbow. Um, so again, this is a self-striping colorway. It's only three colors. So I'll probably add in a contrast, but I only bought this because she was having a really nice sale. And so I always wanted to try her cell striping. So I got one skein and I'm looking forward to knitting this up and just having something in the round to work on. Okay, so. All right, so other than that, I think I did an okay job with talking you quickly through all my projects. I'm sure I left out some information. So if you have questions, of course, leave them below. So I'll quickly talk about maybe some life things. Um, first, I am still listening to Tom Lake, the audiobook, but I only have two hours left. So I'm right at the end. And I have to say, this book is so much better than I ever could have thought. I don't even remember what exactly drew me into buying it. Um, Again, I'm listening to it, so I'm not reading it myself, but there's something about it that sounded whimsical. And so I'm listening to it. And I, I, this is one of those books where I have been kind of sucked into it from the beginning, probably because Meryl Streep is narrating it. So how could you not love that? But I, again, I wasn't really sure how much I would identify with the story. It's by Anne Pratchett, who I know is a prolific writer, but I've never read her stuff. I usually read sci-fi and fantasy, so I didn't know if this would, and classics, um, so I didn't know if this would draw me in, but it has. I love this story, highly recommend it. It's called Tom Lake. It's a beautiful story. I'm, I'm kind of not wanting it to end, so I'm very slowly listening to these final two hours that I have, but yeah, it's really nice. I have put a pause on the Throne of Glass series. I'm on the fourth book, I think, fourth or fifth book, but I've put a little pause on because I am trying to finish Tom Lake. So not this coming weekend, but the next weekend, so, so in September, I am going to New Orleans for a weekend trip for my best friend's bachelorette party. I am looking forward to it, but I'm also very anxious because this will be my first time ever being apart overnight from my husband. And again, we've been married for five years, so that's a long time to... Yeah, I've never been apart from him. Um, and my daughter, I don't even want to think about it. That has been keeping me up at night. I know that she'll be okay, but we are very much attached, very bonded. <laughs> so the thought of being away from her for, it's like three nights, that is causing me a lot of stress. So I'm trying to go into this mindset of this girl's trip. I've never done a girl's trip like this. I'm trying to go into this mindset of like, we're just going to have the best time and it's going to be okay, but I am not looking forward to being apart from my family. 
but that's okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be fun. I get to dress up like a cowboy Barbie, so that's great. <laughs> I got these amazing hot pink cowboy boots that have rhinestone fringe. Um, so for one of the nights that we're going to go out, Kira, my, my best friend, she there's like 10 of us girls going. It's a big group. Um, we all got kind of assigned. We picked a color. We're each a different color. So I got hot pink, and of course she'll wear white. And then all of the other girls have different colors to wear. So I'm going for like a hot pink cowboy Barbie look. And I've got a cowboy hat and a cowboy boots, this cute dress. Everything is hot pink. And we're going to be wearing these little wigs. That part I'm not looking forward to because they can be so scratchy. But it'll be hot pink. So hopefully I'll get a picture or something I can share. Um, we're also going to do a Sunday brunch cruise on a steamboat. And it's going to be a jazz brunch. Um, live jazz music is everything to me. So I cannot wait to experience that. Um, we'll get to wear pretty floral dresses and big sun hats. And so, yeah, it's going to be a good trip. I will make sure to pack some easy knitting for the group when we're there. And um, I'll always have it with me. So I'll feel a little bit comforted. <laughs> So that's something exciting that I have got coming up. And then, of course, as I mentioned at the front of this, I have lots of shows. So SAF, all of the different shows. So Basically, come December, I am going to hibernate for a month. I am going to work on nothing but knitting and cross stitch and crochet and just take a deep breath. I have been dying so much yarn. We've got a lot of travel coming up. I just can't wait to settle in. Um, I am excited for SAF. I'm excited for the shows. Those are so invigorating and they really make you feel at the end of it like yes this is great this is what I signed up for I'm I'm so excited but I'm already looking forward to December when I can just hibernate <laughs> I have um like a mystery skein box for December coming and it's Winnie the Pooh themed so uh, it's from Goosey Fibers and I have my friend Heather to blame for that because I she told me about Goosey Fibers and now I am just obsessed with everything she does so I've got that that I'll be working on in December. I'm going to cast on the sweet shop blanket and I'll make I'll make it with all the minis and it's going to be a gift for my daughter because her favorite thing on the whole wide world is Winnie the Pooh. And um, of course she's not going to know that it's Winnie the Pooh themed, but I will know. And um, Claire Garland came out with a Winnie the Pooh little pattern. So I'm also going to knit her Winnie the Pooh. She has a little stuffed Winnie the Pooh and Tigger and she carries them everywhere, and she calls them Pooh and Tig. And every morning when she wakes up, she goes, Pooh, Tig. And she looks for them everywhere, and she carries them around, and she feeds them. And, yeah, so she, she just loves them. So I'm excited to do a Winnie the Pooh-themed project for her. Um, what else? Yeah. This video is getting long, so I guess I'll go ahead and wrap it up. But... The next time I record could either be sometime in September or it'll be when Vlogtober starts. So I hope you're looking forward to that. If you're going to tune in with me this year, I will hopefully have lots of fun stuff to share with you. It'll probably be a lot of frantic videos of me preparing for SAF and then traveling to SAF and then getting back from SAF and frantically preparing for Alabama Fiber Festival. So it's probably going to be kind of a chaotic month, but... Knowing me, I'll find ways to make it as relaxed and comfortable and enjoyable as possible. Who knows, maybe I will get all the yarn dyed in September and just have everything ready to go. So when October rolls around, it'll be less stressful. Um, oh, last thing. We do still have, me and Gabriella of Meriwether Knitting, we, we do still have the botanical make-along going on. And I have to apologize because I've not been active with that. I haven't given away a prize yet. I haven't been looking through the hashtag or anything if I'm honest I have been feeling extremely overwhelmed so I kind of took a little step back from some of those things just to give myself mental break from it but I am going to draw a prize winner for the botanical make-along um, sort of like a mid-year prize winner because this is a year-long make-along you can get more details about it on previous videos or you can you can go to Gabriella's channel you can look at our Instagram posts for information um, but I will draw a prize winner probably in October just to give away a little skein of yarn or something kind of special for the make-along 
and then we'll keep going so it won't end i'm just going to give away a prize i think and maybe i will put together a little mini episode where i show off some of your astounding gorgeous projects that you've been working on for the botanical make along um okay and with that i'm going to leave you there and get home to my family so thank you for tuning in today and i hope you had a nice time and found some inspiration and are looking forward to the impending fall it'll be here before you know it so just hang in there <laughs> or Maybe you're going into spring and then you have that to look forward to, depending on where you are in the year. Anyway, all right, take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Look at your chickens. Is it cute? Uh huh. Are they cuddling? They're pretty. They're cuddling in the dirt. <laughs> Look at that. They're all snuggly. Yeah.